Um, you know, we are a lateral flow company. This is what we do. We're very, very evangelistic about this technology, and we really believe in the potential of this technology. And I have to believe, because you're here and you're giving up your week, uh, that you, you share that view. Uh, we think we're really at a, a significant point of inflection in the self-testing, point of need, point of care, uh, diagnostic market. This concept has really infiltrated people's consciousness, I think, like never before. I mean, we have this going on in the, in the self-testing consumer business. It's going on in the professional uh, point of care business. It's going on in the point of need business. And I use that to cover everything that's not clinical diagnostics. So people are really starting to get this technology. People really want it. People really understand what it can do for them. And that's a very significant thing. This has never happened before. Um, so there's a tremendous market opportunity there in non-traditional market spaces and in very traditional market spaces. But, you know, in order to, to push that market forward, in order for the market to evolve to a point where it's of a really significant size, there's got to be a fundamental technology that underpins the evolution of that market. Right? And I go to a lot of technology conferences, and a lot of them are focused on microfluidics and lab on a chip technologies and the development of the next great box. Right, whatever that might be. Um, and in most cases, I see technologies that are really wonderful. It's great to, to geek out on them. But when it comes to considering productization, actually developing something that you can bring to market in a reasonable time frame for a reasonable cost, there's really not that much in terms of immunosensing technology out there, except for lateral flow, that has the potential to fulfill a lot of the market needs. Now, there's a lot of work to be done to get lateral flow to the point where it can actually do what those markets need. And that's part performance, it's part usability. Right? There's a, a Belgian technologist that I really like to, to, to follow, his name is Peter Hinson, and he talks a lot about S-curves. Uh, and S curves place in, in product life cycles. And, and every technology, every product really goes through some form of a, an S curve life cycle. We start out with the gestation of the technology, starting to, to generate some exploratory products and processes. People start to understand it, they develop more applications for it. It takes off for whatever reason, people get it. Um, it evolves, more applications are developed. Eventually it slows down, it plateaus. It might fall off the other side of that curve, or it might stay on a plateau for a while, but eventually it's supplanted by the next great thing, whatever that might be. Now, I believe we're right about here uh, in that curve for point of care, point of need, self-testing. And there's something particular that happens at this point in a product life cycle or a technology life cycle, which is that there's a real aha moment in the market. People start to get it, right? They start, stop thinking about the technology and how the technology works or whether the technology works and start thinking about what it can do for them, how they integrate it into their lives, what it means to them, right? And this happens in every market. It's happened in cell phones, it's happened in automobiles, it's happening in self-driving cars right now to some degree. It has happened in healthcare. Uh, I like to give the example of the automotive industry where, you know, back in the 70s, when BMW were for, first selling into the, the US market, they were selling on foot of their Dreikugelwirbelwellenbrennraum, with, with apologies to the German speakers in the room. And as you all know, a Dreikugelwirbelwellenbrennraum is a triple hemispheric swirl action combustion chamber. I know you knew that. Um, but this, it's amazing to think that this is what BMW was selling to American consumers in the 70s, but this is how they gained interest in the market, when it was all about the technology. Now, I don't know about you, you maybe you're a gearhead, maybe you care about a triple hemispheric swirl action combustion engine. I don't. People buy luxury automobiles because of what they do for them, how they integrate them in their lifestyle, how they make them feel, and this market has flipped. This market has gone through that period in the S-curve that I think we're at with this self-testing market. It's happened in healthcare. It's happened particularly in diabetes. It's happened in glucose testing, where you go back to the 50s and 60s, and it was all about the technology. It wasn't very user-friendly. It wasn't very productive for a lot of years. But it eventually got to the point where it started making a real difference in people's lives people started to live this technology in a very real sense, and there's really no technology that is lived 
like this one. All right? This one keeps you alive. And it's getting more and more usable. It's getting more and more productive. It's getting more and more integrated into people's lives. It's happened a little bit in the lateral flow industry. Right? You see it in the pregnancy testing industry to some degree. Not to a great degree, but to some degree. When you go back to the 70s, it was all about the technology. Move on into the 80s, and it started getting a little softer. And in the early 2000s, it was the best technology you could pee on. Now, it's about what it can do for you. It's about how people live the technology and make it work for them. Now, it's still not a very user-friendly technology. This technology can be better designed. It can be better. Uh, brought to market, but it, at least it's a good example of what can happen when a market for a lateral flow goes through that flip in the, in the S-curve. So the question I have underpinning all of this really is, if this market's truly going to evolve and it's going to get above the several billion dollar level that it's at, and it's going to penetrate all those new self-testing, point of need testing markets, what is the fundamental technology that can underpin that market? And I truly don't believe there is anything else in immunosensing that can address the problem right now on a broad basis. Lateral flow is the most broadly applicable, mature, manufacturable immunosensor available today. And that's a pretty big statement, right? Uh, and I think over the course of the next few days, we're going to try and prove that statement. And I'm going to show you some examples of, of things that we have done that, that would support that.